I first heard about Terry Mugler and his fashions probably in the very early 90s. Uh, somehow I caught glimpses of his runway shows and I thought to myself, wow, those are pretty wild outfits. I didn't hear about Angel probably until 1994, even though it launched in 1992. It was a groundbreaking uh, fragrance. Uh, it's been around uh, since then. Uh, I guess this is uh, 2022 and it launched in 1992. What, 30 years later? It's still around and still going strong, I think. I discovered it around 1994, uh, 95, probably 1994 when I was going to film school, art school, and I worked in a retail establishment with the photography and uh, that's where I started smelling it on the uh, clientele that came in. Ladies used to come in smelling like angel and my nose was so fixed on uh, developing chemicals that when I f smelled Angel, I would be like, wow, what is that smell? It's amazing. Terry Mugler passed away a couple weeks ago, and I'm putting together a list of my top 20 most favorite and greatest uh, fragrances from the house of Mugler. So if you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about the house of Mugler or Terry Mugler. I first discovered Mugler's Angel around 1994. Two, three years later, I discovered um, Amen, uh, which is uh, something I wanted for men because at the time, smelling this fragrance Angel on women was so intoxicating with that full on, you know, sparkly patchouli and gourmand notes. I was obsessing over finding something that would be sort of similar for men until Amen launched in 96 and I think it made its uh, debut here in the States around the early part of 1997 and I became a fan of not only both Angel and Amen which used to be called Angel Men when it first launched. Anyway, in today's video I've got 20 of my most favorite and Mugler fragrances for women, for men, and unisex offerings in one video. If you want to find out what they are, I'm going to let you know. These are not fragrances that are only currently on the market. These are of all time. So these have uh, there's fragrances here that have come and gone, but I'm ranking the list with number 20 being least favorite, number one being most favorite, but these are all great fragrances because Mugler used to be one of my most favorite, favorite designer houses. They have definitely slipped and now they're under L'Oreal. God knows what's going to happen with the men's fragrances because nothing is selling now except for the original Amen. Have any of them been brought back yet? I don't know. But either way, I should say I would probably not be here doing videos if it wasn't for Terry Mugler. Yes, it's Terry Mugler's fragrances plus several other uh, fragrances that came along the way, but if it wasn't for this brand, I probably would not be here shooting videos and talking about fragrances because this brand's fragrances, mostly Amen and Angel, really got me excited about fragrances and the way they smelled. Anyway, I'll let you know what these fragrances are. Before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Let's get started right away. We're going to start off with one of the latest offerings from Mugler, the House of Mugler. It's Alien Goddess at number 20. Natalie Lorsan and uh, Marie Salamagna created this in 2021. It's bourbon, vanilla, cashmere, and jasmine, heliotrope, and coconut. They claim it's coconut water. I get very creamy qualities here. It has a very beachy vibe, very vanillic and musky, and of course floral. Nothing like the original uh, Alien. Uh, they do have the uh, the jasmine, which is prominent in the original Alien, uh, but to me, I think it's a pretty solid flank flanker. I shouldn't call it a flanker because it's kind of a, a totally original fragrance, but I'm starting off the list with uh, Alien Goddess at number 20. That's a ladies targeted release. Next up is a men's fragrance, Pure Coffee at number 19. This is a fragrance that launched in 2008. Uh, this was... Uh, created by Jacques Houclier. And Jacques Houclier created most of men's fragrances uh, in this uh, series, whereas Olivier Cresp created the original 
Angel, and I think other people created Flankers and some of the other fragrances. Pure Coffee is at number 19. I like it, but you know, I always liked fragrances like Pure Havana and Pure Malt and uh, of course uh, Ultra Zest. This one, I like the fact that it does remind me a little bit more of Amen, but in a coffee direction and that's what I like about it. So it's coffee, patchouli, musk, vetiver and cedar with this really cool uh, star on it. And this is probably one of the only bottles that doesn't have the clear uh, star on it. So Pure Coffee at number 19. Next up at number 18, it's Ice Men, kind of going to that similar coffee-like experience. Because when I first started doing videos uh, 10 years ago, a lot of people used to say this one has this kind of like an iced coffee experience. I can see that with this one, but this launched in 2007, created by Jacques Houclier once again. I would call this a woody aromatic and spicy fragrance and it has notes of nutmeg, patchouli, woodsy notes and musk. It's pretty solid. I really like this one. This is my only bottle and I will cherish it because it's discontinued. Ice Men at number 18. Next up at number 17, it's Pure Wood. You know, I was kind of a uh not very into this particular fragrance, but it grew on me and grew on me and grew on me. Uh, this came out in 2014, and I think what they've done is uh, taking that Amen DNA from Mugler and taking it into a woody direction, but you still have kind of like gourmand notes in the background, kind of like mingling with the kind of woodsiness of this particular fragrance. The bottle itself is also kind of like, uh, you know, it's got the texture of wood finish and things like that, and which I kind of like about it. I don't know who the perfumer for this one is, but it's considered an amber woody. It's a 2014 launch, and it features oak, vanilla, coffee, patchouli, and cypress. I really like this one. That's why it's at number 17. And I do like it a little more than pure coffee. So number 17, pure wood. At number 16, it's pure tonka. This should be higher up the list, but some of the other fragrances I prefer a little more. This, once again, is a male-targeted fragrance. So far, we've talking about one female targeted release, uh, Alien Goddess, and the rest have been male targeted. This is a great gourmand highlighting the Tonka beans, and I think they've done a great job with this one. Once again, it's Jacques Houclier. It came out in 2016, and it's an amber woody fragrance focusing on Tonka beans with coffee, cacao, vanilla, licorice, and lavender. I really like the idea that Mugler utilized this licorice note, and I really love licorice, anise, absinthe, kind of these kind of like greenish, kind of lightly boozy, spicy notes. Notes. And they do a good job with this one, but sadly it's at number 16. Pure Tonka uh, is number 16. Moving on to the unisex fragrances uh, from the Less Exceptions collection. It's a Chypressime, this one right here. And once again, this one is kind of a toss-up between the next three. I just ended up putting it here. But I really like it for the whole Chypress styling and the kind of like foamy, oak mossy experience with the patchouli in here. Interesting, this is created by Jean-Christophe Herreau along with Olivier Paul before Olivier Polge moved to Chanel to take over his dad's position at Chanel. It's a great fragrance. Launched in 2014 and the whole idea again is oak moss patchouli, bergamot, pear and orange. Really delicious fragrance. It's a uh, Chypressime from uh, Mugler. At number 15 it's one of the unisex fragrances. It's Queer Impertinent from the Less Exceptions collection and this one is created by Jean-Christophe Herrault. I think it's definitely really great because here they utilize that licorice note and and I really like this licorice note because they keep using it over and over again in this house. And it's definitely the star here. It's star anise along with tobacco, amber, and leather. It's a 2015 launch and I think it's a really solid release. So at number 15, it's queer impertinent. Next at number 13, it's one of the wildest creations from Mugler for men and very animalic of all things. It's Amen Pure Leather or Pure Queer. And this one is definitely taking that whole Mugler DNA into an animalic direction. One that was a little daring for a designer fragrance, but really definitely solid uh, experience. This is what the bottle looks like. This is actually a dark uh, glass as well. They did a good job with this. And, and the finish on the bottle is also kind of leathery. Launched in 2012, it's a leather fragrance. Features leather, caramel, patchouli, coffee, honey, vanilla, mint, tonka beans, and milk. Very, very unique kind of milky, gourmand, animalic leather. Very, very daring. I definitely think it is. So, so number 13, it's Pure Leather, Pure Queer. At number 12, it's A Taste of Fragrance. And uh, this French name, I think it was called La Goutte d'Or, I think, something like that. But this is definitely one when I first bought, 
Uh, I bought it in 2012. I received it in the mail and I was like, wow, what the heck? This is so, so good. Very sexy, very Mugler-esque, very patchouli-esque, but kind of spicy with chili peppers. At one time, this used to be called pure chili, uh, but uh, it was a very short-lived flanker and I'm glad to have a half a bottle of it still launched in 2011 and it features coffee, chili pepper, vanilla, patchouli, tonka beans, coriander and cedar. If you know this one let me know. It's ended up at number 12 but it's definitely a great great flanker to the Amen series. So number 12, A Taste of Fragrance. Number 11, going to Alien for the ladies. This is a Dominic Ropion and a Laurent Bruyere creation launched in 2005 and I believe this is like an amber floral experience with lots of jasmine sandbag, ambergris and cashmere. And, you know, it's uh, very unique. Uh, it's not like Angel, which is that whole gourmand patchouli thing. This is definitely more musky and floral. Kind of has a light, um, kind of like solar-esque, uh, little sunny kind of an experience with that um, uh, jasmine note, but it's also definitely not the kind of um, indolic jasmine where it gets kind of dirty smelling and things like that. But I think it's a very popular re release. It's so popular that they launched that Alien Goddess, but even though Alien Goddess has that uh, jasmine note, I think definitely shouldn't be a flanker of Alien, but it's a great scent. Alien at number 11, Pure Malt at number 10. This is definitely one of those fragrances that I really, really loved uh, early on, along with Pure Havan, Pure Malt, definitely really solid. But Pure Malt is considered an amber woody fragrance launched in 2009. And a lot of these fragrances were limited editions, but they'd be out of stock or they'd be removed and they'd be brought back, especially this one and Pure Havan. But this one features the barley notes, fruity notes, peat, whiskey, patchouli, vanilla, coffee, amber, orange, and musk. It's a really delicious, boozy fragrance and a great, uh, you know, alternative, not an alternative, but a flanker of the the original uh, Amen. Pure Malt at number 10. I don't know who that perfumer is for that one. It's nowhere to be found. But at number 9, a fragrance created by Quintan Biche. It's uh, Angel Muse, a beautiful amber fragrance. And it's actually taking Angel into a new, modern, more gourmand direction. And I think Quintan Biche did a great job on this one. Launched in 2016, it's patchouli, hazelnut cream, vetiver, pink peppercorn, and and grapefruit. Very delicious fragrance. Sort of unisex leaning as well. So Angel Muse at number nine. At number eight, uh, it's a very delicious fragrance from the Less Exceptions collection. It's Wonder Bouquet. I don't know if you guys ever uh, sampled this one. It's highly recommended by me. It's a floral no uh, fragrance, uh, but it's got these bready gourmand notes contrasted with it. Created by Jean-Christophe Herald in 2017. I absolutely love this one. It's bread notes, beeswax, hazelnuts, vanilla, cashmere, and jasmine, tuberose, orange blossom, and shiso. That shiso, you can totally smell it. It's like a, a, a Japanese herb. It's got kind of like a minty, a kind of a herbal quality to it, but not necessarily. Like, it's almost like mint and winter fresh or winter green or whatever that minty note is. Kind of interesting that contrasts with the bready notes and all the flowers in here. Such a great fragrance. Wonder Bouquet at number eight. Next fragrance at number seven is a fragrance that came out in 2014, created by Jacques Houclier, who created a lot of the men's fragrances uh, in the Mugler collection uh, of uh, fragrances, along with, uh, once again, Quintan Biche, who did uh, Angel Muse. This is a great fragrance, a flanker to Amen Ultra Zest. Wow, this is so good, guys. If you don't know this one, this is uh, probably one of the better flankers. They did a great job with this one. Here's the bottle uh, right there. And uh, this was that very orangey take on uh, Mugler's Amen DNA. I'd consider this a woody, spicy fragrance fragrance. As I said, it's Jacques Houclier along with Quintan B. She came out in 2014. It's blood oranges, clementines, patchouli, and vanilla. Very delicious, uh, kind of a gourmand citrus amen uh, fragrance. I think they did a great job with this one. Both Jacques Houclier and uh, Quintan B. Uh, wonderful fragrance. And it was pretty short-lived. It just vanished and... Uh, it was gone. It's such a great fragrance. Anyway, at number seven, it's Ultra Zest. Amen Ultra Zest from Mugler. At number six, it's Pure Havan. I have another backup bottle back there, but uh, this is a, a pretty low. Pure Havan is so great. It's such a great fragrance that the honey take on, honey take on 
a very lightly tobacco-ish fragrance from Mugler. I think it's an amber woody fragrance. Launched in 2011 and it's Jacques Houclier once again. He did some great work for this house. Uh, I hope he continues doing some stuff that's similar to uh, this particular fragrance. He's uh, currently doing a lot of the fragrances for the brand Map of the Heart and they there's some stuff like similar to this uh, collection of fragrances he's done here. But this is honey, tobacco, vanilla, cacao, patchouli, amber, styrax, and labdanum. Beautiful fragrance. Warm gourmand. At number six, it's pure Havan. At number five, it's cologne. Mugler cologne. And for me, Mugler cologne has a lot of meaning because I first discovered Angel, then it was Amen, and then I used this Amen so much that you know your nose gets burned out. And when this came out, it was like the complete opposite. The complete opposite of any of the other fragrances from this house because it, everything else was like beastly and this was a freshy, you know? Uh, I wore this so much to uh, a gym I was going to that I had signed up just brand new gym that was built here in San Francisco and I wore it after showers and I also wore it during the the you know the gym workouts as well it's because it's very very fresh and soapy very clean it's a citrus aromatic Alberto Moria has created it in 2001 this is the newer version that came is it 2001? Yeah, this came out in 2001. This is the newer version that um, they came out with in 2017. But it's Neroli Bergamot Petigran Musk and Orange Blossom. One amazing fragrance. And I think the story was that Terry Mugler had gone somewhere in um, Morocco and he smelled the soap and he, I guess, contracted out um, Alberto Mori is to create a fragrance that smelled like that uh, soap. It's, it's a great fragrance, uh, very, very fresh. So, cologne at number five. Number four, it's Over the Musk, and I don't have too much left of this. Uh, I don't know what the, the, the story is with these fragrances, but I heard from someone in France that these are back and selling in France. I don't know when they're going to make their way here, but they're off the USA website, and no stores are selling these. But Over the Musk is amazing. I really love it, but it's a skin scent mostly for me. I've heard from people say it's not a skin scent so go figure how that works for me it's a skin scent it's very close to the skin it doesn't have a lot of projection but it's very very sexy it's considered a woody floral musk and it's created by Jean-Christophe Herrell along with Olivier Polge once again launched in 2014 it features musk cashmere wood and bread seeds and black pepper it's so delicious guys it's a great kind of a vegetal musky fragrance uh, that's to die for number four over the musk Love, love, love that fragrance. At number three, it's B Men. Uh, this was so good. It's so dear to my heart with this particular fragrance. I absolutely love it, and I've gone through so many, so many bottles of this one. Launched in 2014, once again created by Jacques Houclier. It's considered an amber woody, and here we go with the licorice again. This one not only features licorice, but also anise. Notes that I really, really love. I grew up with these spices. Uh, spices, licorice, patchouli, anise, vanilla, leather, cedar, violet, vetiver, musk. I actually, when this first... Uh, came out I had um, bought it from Nordstrom because Nordstrom was like the only store that really sold Mugler fragrances here in this city uh, in San Francisco until much later on that uh, uh, like Macy started carrying the brand but I had bought my bottle for the first time and I spent Christmas in New York City uh, right in Times Square I had a hotel room there way up at the very top and it snowed and I was wearing this it lasted through that really really cold snow so it really has a major meaning for me because I remember that trip I remember wearing this particular fragrance and I remember smelling great either way B man from the house of Mugler at number three getting really close to the number one spot at number two, it's the second fragrance I discovered from the house of Mugler, the first fragrance for men, Angel Men, which later became M.A. Men. It's the stuff I wore so much of. I wore a lot of and I actually gave it as gifts to brothers, my sister's husband, all these people I knew because I was like the Mugler spokesperson around my family and friends. I absolutely loved it and I had friends that hated it. Not only did they hate the original Angel, but they also hated the, the men's... Uh, Angel. But mom really loved Angel and she loved all the Mugler fragrances. But Amen is such a great fragrance. It's not what it used to be. It's gotten so weak and it used to be a beast. It was a beastly fragrance. It would last two days on you and uh, it still wouldn't come off. But now it's a weakling. You know, it's a weakling. Launched in 1996, created by Jacques Houclier. It's an amber woody fragrance and features caramel, coffee, patchouli, vanilla, honey, milk, tonka, benzoin, lavender. And one thing I want to tell 
tell you about this. I took a trip in the summer of uh, 2001, like a month before 9-11, to New Orleans. In the heat of the humid, hot summer, I went somewhere, and I guess uh, it was early at a cl not a club but it was a bar a restaurant club kind of a thing and some folks were coming in and you know setting up um their lounge area while we were having cocktails and some some guy came in and he took his bottle of amen this is like august heat and humidity and he just went like this and like this and like this and like this like this like 10 times and those days this was a powerhouse and i was like in in heaven smelling amen and uh you know that once again that whole experience has left a major impression on me it's a great fragrance it's sad that it's uh not what it used to be but when i smell it uh, when I spray it I still remember those days of smelling this uh, fragrance and wearing tons of it anyway number two it's amen or angel men and can you guess my number one I think you can if you know me I would go with uh, angel as a number one Mugler fragrance it's still here it's still around it smells great yes it's gotten watered down it's gotten weaker it is under L'Oreal now I didn't speak about L'Oreal but this is such a great iconic fragrance um, it's created by Olivier Cresp as I said he now has Acro if you know the brand Acro it's the perfumer behind those fragrances who created this it's a masterpiece it's an amber so many people love it and so many people hate it I know a lot of ladies that don't like this particular fragrance and they work in perfumes go figure launched in 1992 it features patchouli dark chocolate caramel honey vanilla cotton candy tonka beans amber musk and coconut it is a masterpiece it still smells great today. It's a great looking bottle and if it wasn't for Terry Mugler, this fragrance would not uh, be around today. And I wouldn't be around here doing videos for you guys. Anyway, that's my number one fragrance, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching today's video. I really think that this is one of the best houses and one of the reasons why I started doing videos because these fragrances meant so much to me. And smelling them uh, brings back so many memories of when I was first discovering each and every one of these fragrances. Sad that he's, he's gone. He's no longer with us, Terry Mugler. Although the brand kind of uh, rebranded as Mugler around 2014. Here it still says Terry Mugler. This came out in 2014. But uh, right after these uh, fragrances, um, it became Mugler. But now he's no longer with us. Hopefully L'Oreal will do some good stuff with the men's fragrances. I'm, I'm, I keep praying and hoping and wishing that they'll bring eau de parfums of some of the bigger fragrances like Pure Malt, Pure Havan, maybe Amen. Come on, guys, give it to us. We need them. They've got them for the ladies. Why not for the men, right? And better bottles. These bottles suck, personally. They look nice. They do look nice, but they don't really spray well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. If you have a favorite Mugler fragrance or five, please list them. Let me know what they are so I can find out. And what do you think about the fragrances in this video and my ranking? Anyway, thanks so much again. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. You know what? I'm going to do a couple of honorable mentions, not going to detail a lot. Pure Shot, which became Pure Energy after the big, um, you know, controversy about the spokesmodel for this fragrance who shot his girlfriend. A very, very fresh take on the Mugler DNA, uh, the Amen DNA, as I, what I should say. Alien Man um, didn't do much, but I think it's definitely worth noting, uh, taking that, you know, licorice kind of. Uh, note again into a fragrance. Sadly, it didn't do very well. I don't think it did. And then the two flankers that came after it, boring. Angel Nova, you know, it's okay. Uh, it's not Angel. It's a fruity take on Angel, I think. Um, it's, it's, not, it's nice. It's just not the best. Aura, I'm still not sure about it. I'm, I'm liking it more and more the more I have it, but I still think it smells odd. Womanity. It's an odd one once again, but this is a great uh, flanker to Alien. This is Alien Oud Magisto, an Oudy take on Alien. Anyway, those are some honorable mentions that didn't fit my top 20, but what am I missing? There are some fragrances out there that I, I haven't mentioned, but I don't own them either. Anyway, let me know what I'm missing and what I should find. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.